Hi, and welcome to Math Movies with Ms. Foyer Beck and Ms. Baludi. Today we will be subtracting mixed numbers with common denominators. So here we have an example of 3 and 7 eighths minus 2 and 5 eighths. So we're going to get in the practice of always, always, always subtracting our fractions first and then our whole numbers. Because as we get into some more tricky problems, we want to make sure that we're solving them accurately and it always helps to subtract our fractions first. So in this case, what we can notice is that we have two fractions that have a common denominator. 7 eighths and 5 eighths both have eighths in their denominator. So just like we did in another math movie, we're able to subtract when we have a common denominator without doing that much work. So all we need to do here is we need to say, okay, I'm going to keep the eighths the same. In this case, 7 eighths minus 5 eighths brings me to 2 eighths. And then with my whole numbers, I have 3 minus 2, which is 1. My last and final step, as I always need to do when I'm working with fractions, is try to find the simplest form. So I know that 2 eighths can be simplified and it changes into 1 fourth when I divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2. So 1 and 1 fourth is my final answer. Okay, here we have another fraction subtraction problem. 2 and 3 fifths minus 1 and 4 fifths. So once again, we are fortunate that we have two fractions that have a common denominator. They both have fifths. But what I'm also noticing is though, even though this number, two and three fifths, even though it has a two, and that means that the top number is definitely larger than one and four fifths, I'm also noticing that if I were to go ahead and do subtract my fractions first, I would not be able to take four-fifths away from three-fifths because four-fifths is bigger than three-fifths. So what I need to do is I need to find a way to borrow from my whole number here so that I can change two into a one. And what I'm going to do is with that other one, I'm going to borrow it and I'm going to convert it into five-fifths. I know that 5 fifths is equal to 1 whole, so what I've just done here, I'm going to add that up and I'm going to bring over this 1 whole, I'm going to add together the 3 fifths and the 5 fifths and that's 8 fifths. What I'm really saying here is that 1 and 8 fifths, this improper fraction as we sometimes call it, is equivalent to 2 and 3 fifths. We're just writing the number in a different way to help us do the subtraction in a nice easy method. I'm going to just bring over 1 and 4 fifths and my subtraction symbol because now I'm able to subtract those numbers. So starting with my fractions, 8 fifths minus 4 fifths is 4 fifths. 1 minus 1 is 0, so there's nothing here. My final answer then is 4 fifths unless I can simplify, and in this case I can't, so 4 fifths is my absolute final answer to 2 and 3 fifths minus 1 and 4 fifths. Alright, so let's try again. This time we have 6 and 1 fourth minus 3 and 3 fourths. Once again, my top number, 6 and 1 fourth, is larger than my bottom number, so I'll be able to subtract. But again, just like the problem on the previous slide, 1 fourth is a smaller fraction than 3 fourths. So I need to apply the same strategy that I did earlier, which is that I'm going to borrow from 6. I'm going to change the 6 to 5. I'm taking 1 away from it, and I'm going to add that 1 in the form of 4 fourths to keep it in line with the same denominator that I'm working with. If I have 1 fourth and I add 4 fourths, now I have 5 fourths. I'm also going to bring over that whole number 5 so that I don't forget about it. So now I have 5 and 5 fourths. What I'm really saying here is that this number, 5 and 5 fourths, is equivalent to 6 and 1 fourth. We're just writing it in another way. Now I can just slide over this number and my subtraction sign. I've got 3 and 3 fourths. And my subtraction will begin with the fraction. So now I can do 5 fourths minus 3 fourths, 2 fourths. And I can do 5 minus 3, which is 2. So my final answer is 2 and 2 fourths. 
except I need to simplify. So I know that 2 fourths is equivalent to 1 half. So I'm going to rewrite my final answer as 2 and 1 half. So just remember, any time that you're subtracting mixed numbers that have common denominators, make sure that if your top fraction is smaller than your bottom fraction, that you're borrowing from the holes, and that will allow you to have a fraction that's larger in the top number than this bottom number, and you're all set to subtract.